Hey, FCF, we are um, we're essentially back in our second Timothy study, but because this is Christmas week, we're going to take a, a little bit of a pause, and we're just going to look at some portions of Scripture that, um, that deal with Christmas. Of course, from the biblical standpoint, uh, there was no Christmas. There was just the, the advent of the Messiah. So let me read you some Scripture, and we'll kind of pull some things together in the book of uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 23. It says, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. I mean, most of us are familiar with this passage. We see it on Christmas cards and things like that. But it's talking about this mysterious person. It's the Messiah. For 1,500 years, the Jews had been waiting for this promised one, the Messiah, the one who was going to tell the truth about God and the truth about life make all things clear, establish the kingdom of God. And there were images all through the Old Testament, scattered images, where depictions of this Messiah were given. And sometimes the Messiah sounds very human, and sometimes the Messiah sounds divine. Even in this passage we're reading, once again, the virgin will give birth to a son. So here's a child, a human child, very unnatural birth from a virgin. But they will call the child, the human child, Emmanuel, which means God with us. So here we have this child, though human, is also fully divine, fully human, fully divine. Um, that's the nature of the one we call Christ, the Messiah. So we have to start by realizing this, this was the greatest intervention in human history. It had been uh, predicted for, like I said, about 1,500 years, but finally it had come to pass. Now let me add a few other scriptures on to this. In the Gospel of John, John, unlike Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which are called the synoptic Gospels in that they are very similar in events, but not totally, but John's Gospel is very different. Listen to John's description of the coming of this child born of the Virgin and how differently it sounds. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1, Speaking of Jesus, you'll see it as it goes on. In the beginning was the Word. Word is capitalized. It's a personal name. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Through Him, verse 3, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. Verse 14, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. That's Christmas, the event where Jesus, the Word, God, the eternal Creator, becomes a babe in the manger, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, meaning His His character, His personality, His persona. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son. So He's not just a Son. He's the one and only. He's God the Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. And the idea of truth there is that Jesus reveals the reality of all things, the reality of God, the reality of the human condition, the realities about all the things that um, God has developed and put together in the universe. Verse 18, No one has ever seen God, meaning with the physical eyes, but the one and only Son, who is Himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made Him known. Now, this for us is kind of mind-boggling. We get into this Christian teaching, and it is clearly taught that, that God, the one true God, has eternally existed in three distinct personages, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. They are one in that they are co-eternal, co-omnipotent, co-omniscient, and all like that. They're, they're one in their goals and their values. They're, they're in total harmony, but they are distinct personages. However, they want us to recognize them as one God, the one God eternally existent in three persons. So now the Son, the, the eternal divine Son, He takes on human form, and He is going to, by His life, reveal the full character, the full truth about the Father in particular, and the fullness of God is going to be revealed uh, in Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, his, his birth, his, his teachings, his miracles, his sacrificial death, his resurrection from the dead. He's revealing the truth about God, the truth about life, the truth about even life after death. Now listen to the way in the New Testament, the book of Colossians chapter 2 talks about Christ and this Christmas event. It says, for in Christ, and that word means the Messiah, in Christ or the Messiah, lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So here we have this statement that you really have to take some time and, and ponder to understand what it's saying. It's saying that everything there is that can be known about God, 
Everything there is that God could express about himself has now been successfully expressed in the life, the sacrificial death, and the resurrection of Jesus. So now, we don't have to have any doubts about the character of God. We don't have to have any suspicions. We know he's loving. We know he's forgiving. We know he knows what is best, wants what is best. He's fully revealed himself as almighty, but that his almighty love is always uh, what what. Uh, guarantee, excuse me. His almighty power is always governed by his, his sacrificial love, which guarantees us that he uses his power only for our highest good. One last one from Colossians chapter 1, verse 19. It says, God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, the him is Jesus, and through him to reconcile all things to himself. Now, reconcile is a relational word, so it's saying that Humanity in particular was not reconciled to God. Satan slandered the character of God. Adam and Eve stopped trusting God, so God started this process of progressively revealing himself. It culminates in Christ, in Christ on the cross, so that now he can win back our trust. He has proven himself trustworthy, that the slander of Satan was just that, that it was slander. And through him, to reconcile all things to himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven. This takes in these angelic civilizations that Satan also uh, had a lot of sway over by making peace through his blood on the cross. Now, now, that's powerful. What it's saying is that the Almighty God, by the sacrificial death of Jesus, revealed that though he is the Almighty and could do whatever he wants, that everything that he does is always governed by his sacrificial love for those that he created, particularly as image-bearing beings, whether it be angels or humans. That is what reconciles us back to him. That proves his trustworthiness. It proves his unique fitness to be the king of the universe, the ruler of the universe. And this all goes back to Christmas. It all started with when God the Son took on humanity and gave his life as a, as a living sacrifice before it was a real sacrifice on the cross. Well, Merry Christmas to you, and I hope this adds a, a little bit of a, a fresh insight to the whole, um, whole experience of Christmas for you and your family. Thank you.